Let's have a quick look at the two formulas that we have for oscillations for simple harmonic motion. And I want to make sure that we understand where all of the different parts come from so that we'll be able to use them. So you'll find these two formulas on your formula sheet. Let's start with the mass on the spring. We have that the period of this oscillation is going to be equal to 2 pi times the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant. So let's quickly think of some qualitative comparisons. If we increase our mass, do you expect that it would take longer or shorter for this oscillation to happen? Well, if we increase our mass, it's probably going to go farther up and down on the spring, and the time it takes might increase. And that does indeed happen in our equation. The time increases, but it might not increase as much as we think. It does not increase proportionally to the mass, but at the square root of the mass. Same thing goes for K. With a stiffer spring, the period or the time it takes will decrease as we expect because it's on the bottom of a fraction here but it decreases as the square root of k so not at a directly proportional rate what you might find surprising is that there is no term in this formula for the displacement or what it can be called the amplitude how far we pull this mass that makes absolutely no difference for how long it takes for this mass to oscillate back and forth and you might ask yourself, well, if I pull it farther, won't it take longer to return? But no, it will just actually move at a faster speed, of course, because the spring pulls it at a much higher rate, pulls it with a much stronger force. So it gets a higher speed. It indeed has more spring potential energy and more kinetic energy as it goes through that oscillation. But it will not affect how long it takes to complete one oscillation. The caveat, of course, is that you can't pull it so far that you change the way the spring behaves. If it stops behaving like a simple harmonic oscillator, like you add too much friction or something like that, then it won't work. But in general, as long as the spring is obeying Hooke's law, if it's a Hooke's law spring, then the displacement does not affect the period. So now let's look at the pendulum example. The formula looks surprisingly similar to the one for the mass on the spring, which makes sense, I suppose, because these are both behaving in a very similar way. They're both simple harmonic oscillators, and they both end up drawing out sine or cosine functions. So this one says that the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L, and L is the length of the pendulum, divided by G, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Again, let's think qualitatively about how these actually work. If you increase the length of a pendulum, the period will also increase because it's on the top of this fraction. It won't increase at a directly proportional rate but at the square root of L. And this should be an intuitive sort of idea because if you imagine for example a clock with a very very short pendulum it'll go tick 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 back and forth whereas a clock with a very long pendulum will go tick tock. Or even better imagine yourselves on the playground with the swings if you go on a swing that has a very high uh, bar holding those swings up, so very long swing chains, your period of oscillation is a lot bigger. It'll take you a lot longer to swing a complete swing versus if you're on a very, very short swing. You might be surprised to find that the period of oscillation of a pendulum also depends on the acceleration due to gravity. So the stronger the acceleration due to gravity is, the smaller the period will be. So if you would take a pendulum that oscillates once every second on the Earth and take it to the moon, it might oscillate once every two seconds, as a quick example. It's not going to be exactly that, of course. Now again, it's related to the square root of gravity, and it's inversely proportional. Now the biggest surprise about the pendulum one is that there is no term m. The period of a pendulum does not depend at all on the weight of that mass. This might also be counterintuitive, but indeed, if we would take this pendulum and put a, a much heavier weight on the end of it, it will not change the amount of time it takes to complete an entire swing. So these, especially M and G, might surprise us that M only matters if it's a spring and G only matters if it's a pendulum. As surprising as it may be, these formulas do work, however. Of course, let's keep in mind that for a pendulum, 
This only applies when the amplitude is fairly small, less than 15 to 20 degrees, when we can apply that small angle approximation. What at least is encouraging is that these two formulas do look very similar, which we'd expect because these two scenarios exhibit very similar motion.